Today I'm going to give you some tips to help you improve your jazz improvisation. Hi, my name is Chris Davis. Welcome to a channel that I call Trumpet Lessons HQ, where I give you tips, encouragement, and demonstrations to help you become a better trumpet player faster. If you like the sound of that, press the subscribe button right now. All right, if you want to learn jazz improvisation and this whole thing is new to you, let me help you out. The first thing you want to do is listen. Find a good recording of the song that you're trying to learn, especially if it's a jazz standard. There's a lot of recordings of it already likely. So go ahead and listen to the melody. Many of us will have to listen to the song over and again. And that's a good thing because it allows the song to get into your subconscious. We call this internalizing the music. The next thing you want to do is actually sing the song back. We haven't really touched the instrument yet at all. We're using our God-given instrument, which is our voice. Now, finally, I want to recommend if you're learning a jazz standard, there are many recordings of it likely. So I'm going to recommend that you listen to an additional two recordings. So a, a total of three recordings of the of the standard that you're trying to learn. And again, this reinforces internalizing the music. Now, if you find two or three recordings, now you have two or three examples of how to phrase the melody. They're all going to be slightly different. Step number two is to learn the form of the song. Generally speaking, in, in jazz, there are only really a few forms, a few common forms. Uh, you have the blues form, which is 12 bars long. Uh, rhythm changes is 32 bars long and is also AABA form. But there are other songs that may be AABA form and not 32 measures long and vice versa. So when you're listening to the melody and you're learning it, also take note how many measures is the form from beginning to end. And a very easy way to do that is to count the measures. We know the melody now and we know the form now. The next thing we want to do is to learn the harmony. And the good news is we've listened to the melody so much that now we can sing the harmony back. We might not know the notes, we might not know the name of the chords yet, but we do know what it sounds like and we know how it makes us feel. And that's the most important thing. So you can sing it back at this point, at least in part. And that's what you're gonna wanna do next. Now that we can sing the harmony back, we're going to apply it to the trumpet now. We're gonna play the roots of the chords through the form only the roots of the chord. Right, great we've played through the roots of the chords the next thing you can do is arpeggiate the chord so you can play the root third fifth and seventh of the chord now let me explain the term arpeggiate for those who don't know that just means you play the notes one at a time as trumpet players we can't play ten notes at a time like a piano player can so we arpeggiate the chord All right, that was cool. Now, if we're comfortable with that, we can actually go through the form again and play the seventh, the fifth, the third, and the root in that order. So we're gonna go backwards through the same form. Now, if you don't know what notes are in the chord, I'm not gonna explain that today, but you do wanna spend some time learning your um, major scales, learning your minor scales, and learning your Mixolydian scales. Those would be most helpful at this point. All right, now we can play the third and the seventh of each chord, only those two notes in each chord.
now that you're playing thirds and sevenths, you're beginning to understand what it's like to have a good voice leading. And I'll show you what I mean. This time I'm going to play through the form again and I'm going to use what is known as common tones and leading tones. So a note is a common tone if I change chords in the measure, but I don't necessarily have to change notes because there's a note in common. So for example, I'm going to play um, a D minor chord. You spell that D, F, A, and C. The next chord in this song that we're playing today is a G7. So that's G, B, D, and F. Well, F is in both of those chords. That's a common tone. D is also in both of those chords. So we have two common tones between those two chords. Now a leading tone is when you come to a chord tone from a step or from a half step. Let's play some common tones and leading tones right now. There's one more thing I almost forgot to demonstrate for you, and it's the approaching something from a half step. This is a really um, wonderful thing to get to learn how to use. If you approach a note from a half step above or below, uh, it's chromaticism, guys, it's chromaticism. It sounds really cool, and it's a very natural and smooth way to get to a goal, which is a chord tone, right? So check this out, I'm gonna play um, a whole course of approaching chord tones from half step above and a half step below. If you want to learn more about how to practice jazz, then click on one of the videos on the screen and I'll see you there.